Hello, good afternoon. This is Megan Burns, Continuous Line Boot Camp Preview. So I, as you all know, I'm a big fan of and encourage everyone to practice Continuous Line because it helps all artists. It actually helps all people. And so what I'm going to do today is just do a little preview, check out my technology, make sure I'm all connected and things are functioning right. I'll be honest, there's been a lot to learn, and so um, the reason why I didn't announce this is because I want to see if there's any technical uh, things that I need to work out. Like this, here's my camera. This is the best place I could put it uh, without it being too far away. Anyways, so the Continuous Line Boot Camp begins April 3rd, 2023, and it'll be a whole, a whole month, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for one hour of practicing continuous line and learning about and exploring, right? There, I have developed curriculum around continuous line. Everybody knows continuous line. I mean, especially artists, especially urban sketchers, everyone has tried a continuous line, contour drawing. You know, it's just been part of our, it's, it's just been a part of our, our, our uh, tool bag for forever, right? It's been around forever. But what I have done is I have developed curriculum that helps build skill and confidence. And so I want to just go through that quickly that the, um, well, first of all, here's the, um, my practice drawing book that I create for my workshops, right? Here's my logo, my continuous line logo that I have developed with continuous line in mind and how it keeps us connected to our heart, our eye, and our crown or our hand. That's either our hand or your crown, right? And so when we get started with the continuous line, I like to have everyone, oh gosh, this book is full already. <laughs> um, I like to have everyone write out the three benefits of continuous of a continuous line practice. So I'm going to put I have never really been good at writing cursive, and so I'm practicing it with my continuous line. So first up, we're going to just briefly go over the benefits of continuous line. Quite simply, number one, push through... Drawing fears. Almost every artist has them, right? So the continuous line allows you to, it trains you to just push past your fears and do it anyways, right? Number two, understand, oops, <laughs> understand composition in a way that maybe you hadn't before. I totally spelled that wrong. So by drawing in continuous line, you see how things are connected and you learn about composition. And it may not be accurate, but we're not here to draw accurately or be architects. Because if you want to draw accurately like an architect, go to architect school. So the third thing that continuous line, a practice, a continuous line practice does is it Builds confidence. You know why? Because as an artist, is it, as you become more skilled, it, you become more confident in what you're doing. You feel better when you are able to draw the things you set out to draw. When your mind, when you're, uh, oh, that's here. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out where I can point. When your eye says to your hand, draw that cat, and your hand draws that cat, there's a, a confidence that becomes instilled. And by practicing a continuous line, it continues to grow your confidence, you're, you're pushing past drawing fears, you're understanding composition, logistics. And so as you start drawing street scenes or cafe scenes or whatever it is you're drawing in your home, in your, in your kitchen, Add, the more you practice continuous line, the more you're able to understand composition. And that table goes into that chair, 
goes into that door frame, goes into that window, right? You can see how things are connected, right? So I have um, uh, developed three buckets for continuous line. And so the boot camp is going to explore those three um, buckets. First up, the, con the continuous line warm up. For that, I use copy paper and I get it bound at my Office Depot and a big pen. Very simply, those of you who are in the continuous line storytelling group know what this is all about and hopefully you've been practicing it. Seems to be a bit of a delay. But anyway, so uh, this continuous line warm up is not about copying what Megan does, but at first you may want to just until you, you start to get familiar with it, right? So I'm just going to, <clears throat> with my big pen, um, just start drawing a continuous line. And <clears throat> while it is okay to lift your pen when you're doing continuous line drawing, for the warm-ups, I encourage keeping your pen on the page. Sidebar, if you need to take a sip, stop, take a sip of coffee, pet your dog, answer the door, whatever, that's totally fine. But in theory, what I do in workshops is with the continuous line warm up, I ask that there be no chit chat and that for this exercise, you keep your pen on the page and just create lines, right? But one of the most important elements to the continuous line warm up is don't draw anything. Don't draw a mug, don't draw um, your dog, don't draw a flower. Because what happens when you start to draw things is your ego gets involved. And so for the continuous line warm up, I ask that you please keep it two lines. But that doesn't mean you can't get kind of wild in you know, the path you take. I always try to do something different. I never try to do the same thing. But honestly, that was after about maybe a year of doing kind of the same six continuous line warm-ups, right? Um, so now I just kind of let my pen go for a wander, right? They say that's what a drawing is, right? It's letting a line go for a wander, a walkabout, right? So there's really, um, there's no wrong way to do this, the continuous line warm up, unless you just abandon it, and then that's not the point of it at all. <laughs> the point of it is to just simply fill your page with lines. It's sort of along the same lines of a Zen Tangle thing, in that it does have meditative qualities, but you're not making patterns and you're not like filling squares. You're literally just filling a page with the lines that you're organically creating, right? And so this conditions your hand, it conditions your eye, it conditions your arm to move through, to move through strokes, pen strokes, brush strokes, right? Like. Yesterday I did a uh, direct watercolor and I can feel my confidence growing in my brush strokes, right? To me, water, direct watercolor is a little scary uh, because I don't do a lot of it. Um, I enjoy it, but I just don't do as much as I do with, the, um, with my pen, right? But honestly, this practice, this continuous line practice, this warm-up, benefits whatever art medium you choose to play in, right? I happen to love drawing, and I have found that by doing these warm-ups, when I go out into the street and do urban sketching, which I love to do, I'm able to, to draw the thing I want to draw more, more in my style, more in a way that, that I'm pleased with, right? Um, I, having done years of organizing workshops and just, you know, being around artists, I know the biggest complaint I hear, the most common one, is that most people feel like they're too tight. 
their their drawings are too flat. They don't have energy. And I get it. I mean, that's where I think that's where everyone starts, right? Or that's the beginning for a lot of us. I know I did. And I have found that by doing this exercise, my lines are more expressive. They're more full of life. I feel like they're full of energy. I don't even feel like I know they are. And when I get through this uh, exercise, I will show you what I mean by that. So again, one solid line on your page. Pause if you need to get something to drink <laughs> or whatever. Um, there are no continuous line police. Um, when, when sometimes people have said to me when they're doing a continuous line drawing, oh my goodness, I, I lifted the pen. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are no continuous line police and that it's okay to lift the pen. I liken that to ice skating in that ice skaters leave the ice, right? Sometimes it happens when you get cruising along on a drawing because the continuous line will probably speed up your drawing, right? It did for me, my goodness. I can do a pretty complicated drawing and paint it in 15 minutes. And that wasn't necessarily my goal, but um, it, honestly, it was a nice little perk, <laughs> just being able to draw pretty quickly, right? I feel like I was saying something there, and I totally lost track. <laughs> um, but uh, so this the strengthens your ability to be able to draw the thing you want to draw, and that makes us feel better, right? I mean, I'm speaking from personal experience. The more I was able to draw the thing I wanted to draw, the more pleased I came, became. And then the more I wanted to do it, right? Because I was like, oh, I like this. I like this because this, this is making it easier. It's building skill and it's making it easier for me to draw the things I want to draw. I like to go out and look at, it's one of the cool things about living in Mexico. The architecture here is amazing. And it's also, when I moved here, the thing that completely overwhelmed me because I, I moved here by myself during the pandemic and it was a little freaky, honestly. <laughs> and so by picking up the practice of continuous line, I said to myself, don't worry if you don't know how to draw that doorway. Don't worry if you don't know how to draw that window don't worry if you don't know how to draw the taco truck whatever it is I just told myself don't worry about it and just draw it in continuous line and it just it helped me to calm down it helped me to start breathing and it helped me just to sort of be like Ugh. you know okay it's okay it's okay it's okay <laughs> this drawing is going to be okay and I don't know if the world's going to be okay but I feel a little bit better because by doing this practice, not only does it strengthen my ability to draw, but it makes me feel better, it calms me down, it grounds me, it centers me. And so in this, you know, era that we're all managing through, I think anything we can do to help ourselves breathe a little bit better, think a little bit better, draw a little bit better, because when we can do all those things, we can make better choices. <laughs> and honestly, I think we could all, we all, you know, just given the era of chaos that we're in, anything we can do to help ourselves feel better is, is a bonus, right? And keeping yourself connected to a tactile um, uh, activity such as drawing, right? We're all staring at screens a whole lot more these days. And so <clears throat> whatever you can do to sort of give your eye a break from that and your, your eyes, right? All righty, and then <clears throat> I like 
to finish my continuous line drawings with a heart. Somehow I like to fit it into the design, which I never know what it's going to be. I just let myself go. Sometimes I do spirals, sometimes I do triangles, right? there. It's, it's all different. It's always different, and I never know what it's going to be. So the continuous line warm-up is part of the continuous line boot camp. Let me make sure you can see that. And we will start each class with a continuous line warm-up. All right, there we go. Finish big with a heart. So, okay, then, so that's the first bucket. Oh, here, wait, I'm going to leave this here just for a moment because I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the energy of the lines, right? I These are not straight lines. These are not ruler lines. These are lines that were done from my hand that was pretty freestyle. I call it a kickstand when you're down like this, but drawing... Uh, Freestyle continuous lines is no support, no kickstand. And uh, so you get a very energetic line. And to me, I can just, these lines to me feel like they're vibrating because there's just, there's energy to them. And by practicing the energy in your lines, that will translate into the energy of your drawings. So this simple elementary practice is, is key to becoming a more expressive drawer. All right. So the next thing that the next bucket is pattern making. I'm gonna take a little sip of water here. And for this, I'm going to use my Sharpie just so you can see it a little bit better. And because I don't like my Sharpies leaking through because this is just cheap copy paper. I'm just going to put a little protector down. So let's see if I remember how to change the image here. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I'm going to turn that one off and turn this one. Oh, <laughs> wrong one. There we go. Cup of coffee. Okay, so this is where the pattern making comes into play. And this is an, another super good tool to... Um, help you, uh, let's see if I have a little, let me just put a little tape down here, just so these things don't curl up like crazy. So those of you that were with me for the um, coffee cup challenge, this was an exercise that I, I did basically as a way to fill time, but as I did it, I, I saw, oh my goodness, what a great, uh, skill building and um, fear crushing tool is to do pattern making, right? A continuous line pattern making. So you see over here, I have a cup of coffee. Very simple, very basic. And so, and this is always going to be something different. It's, we're using a coffee cup today for the preview. So let's see, I like to start in different places on the page. And to do my coffee cup pattern making. Sometimes I add a spoon, not always. And what you'll see too with this is sometimes the wonkier they are, the cooler they look. Right, because this is not the perfect drawing class. This is right now, this is pattern making. And so, look how fun they are. Sometimes I do the handles first, sometimes I do the mug first. I haven't done the plate first yet. Oh, goodness, what is that? Okay, here, I'm going to do the plate now. <laughs> do a little one like I said the, the different the more different they are let's see I kind of want to go over here and fill the page I 
and then over here. There. So by ice skating through the page, I just did some coffee cup pattern making. And this pattern making is what it helps you do is when you draw this and you maybe your ego goes, oh, I didn't like that. But then you just move on, move on to the next one. And maybe your ego is like, oh, I like that one better. And then you move on to the next one, right? And so you just, you don't, um, you just move on, right? It's not about the individual cup. It's just about the act of moving through and just continuing to make your drawings, right? I like to just put a little coffee in the cup because why not, right? <laughs> just gives it a little, it's very interesting pattern making, right? There. So there's my coffee cups, right? Just in a matter of minutes. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to do one more pattern because it's not just going to be coffee cups and it's always going to be something fun and different. I'm going to flip the page. All righty, put my little protector, my Sharpie protector here. <laughs> Tape it down so it doesn't curl. Now, the next pattern is, oh my goodness, it's a cow. <laughs> um, a little bit more complicated, but you don't have to make it complicated. It's literally about keeping it simple, right? So, let me take a sip of water here. I think for this one, I'm going to start right here. So pattern making of a cow's head. And, uh, you know, I'm going to glance at that, but it doesn't mean I'm going to copy it, right? Because once I get going with my own pattern, it's my own drawing. This is a suggestion, right? Like a cow's head. So here we go. There's my first one. And you know, it kind of makes you nervous, like, oh my goodness, do I even remember what a cow's head looks like? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because it's just a fun challenge. I mean, honestly, a cow's head can be a little, I, you know, even with the horns, it kind of makes it a little complicated, right? But it doesn't matter. You can make a dairy cow <laughs> with no horns. Alrighty. So I've already stopped looking at my reference and I'm just skating on the page at this point. Sometimes when I get going on this, I forget how to talk, so that's because I'm drawing a cow. I love cows. Before I was a working artist, I worked on a cattle ranch, so <laughs> I miss seeing cows, so what do I have to do? I have to draw them. I see them on Facebook, though. <laughs> And then, you know, once you get into it, it's like a super fun thing to do. You're just like, wahoo! 
It's like ice skating on the page. And it just makes you forget about your problems. And maybe that's just me. <laughs> but, you know, some at first sometimes there's a little anxiety about it. But you, you get over that when you realize how much fun it is to draw cows. Or whatever it is, right? Whatever the pattern thingy is. And then I always like to find different ways to draw. I don't like to just do the same thing all the time. Let's see. I feel like I want to do one more. And see, by the time I get down here to this last one, I'm like, I don't care if I've messed them up. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Actually, I'm going to go, you know, right here. It's okay to cross lines on the page. See, now my cows are getting kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I find ways to move around the page by crossing my... There we go. <laughs> there we go pattern making in continuous line I got a page full of cows and you know what's so fun about this is like in anything you do with pattern making it's like you can make your own wallpaper right or your own uh, I feel like this would be a cool countertop right so pattern making continuous line pattern making that's bucket number two alrighty now um, now we move on to Continuous line drawing, which I sometimes call continuous line urban sketching when I'm out there on the streets. And so for our next image, we are going on the streets. This is actually my street here in Mexico City. And um, let me get my other piece of paper here. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, here we go. Here. So, this is where I use the little bit better um, paper. I use the, it's the Canson XL140 watercolor, but it's like middle of the road watercolor. Uh, let's see here. Let me just. There we go. All right, just got to figure out the zoom a little bit. That's all. Takes me a minute, but I get there because I want you to be able to see my whole page. Okay, so then for the um, the drawing part of it, um, I'm going to use my fountain pen. And this is going to be timed for 15 minutes. Actually, I'm going to use my Sharpie for this. You know why I'm going to use Sharpie? Because it... Um, Yeah, I'm just checking to make sure I'm over there. The Sharpie uh, helps you to not get too caught up in detail, right? So, okay, let me get rid of this one. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it, and it's bothering me. Okay, so here we have... I'm actually going to move this up a little bit. This is a Maverick. I didn't know that. I just had to see the... Um, I just love the color of this car, and look how pretty it looks with this building, right? I have not practiced it. When we do these drawings, we're all going to be doing them together. Let me get my mouse out of the way. Alrighty, and so 54. Now, uh, 
we do these as a group drawing. We keep it under 15 minutes, right? So, all right, so where am I going to start? On this car, I'm going to start, on this image, I'm going to start with the wheel. Can I get the coolness of a um, maverick? <laughs> I'm just following the lines, trying to keep, stay organized with the... Uh, I know, a little bit. I don't know. I think that car is super cool, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get its coolness. But that's why we practice. Okay. Now I go, look at the shape of these windows, right? Very 70s. Car mirror. <laughs> and then, of course, the so now, right from the trunk, I see that the uh, the building is right. <laughs> Windshield, and then that end, the other side of the building is right here, but there's a tree. I think, I think that's a tree. <laughs> I'm totally exaggerating the perspective on this building because I can. It also just helps to make it look taller. So nothing about this is accurate, but it sure is fun, though, right? <laughs> it's funny. Ha ha. And honestly, if I can make myself laugh in my drawings, I, um, I'm okay with that. And so I see that the, the corner of this is not far off of the plant, of the tree, right? So... I kind of line it up with a continuous line. You always got to be looking ahead, looking where you just came from, and keeping an eye on uh, the whole deal. So above, so below, right? So my windows get a little bit bigger as they get closer to me. It's completely exaggerated, but this is not the accurate drawing class. Nor will I ever have an accurate drawing class. <laughs> No. Yeah. I'm just going to put some windows in there. Okay, and then we got another little guy over here. Lots of little window frames here. And then we got the doorway. 
which goes right into, look at that funny bush. And then there's a pointy bush right behind it. <laughs> now, you don't have to include all that. I'm kind of doing that just as a demo purpose because look at that. That bush is just right up against the tree and the cow. And so I'm just going to make this be known as a door. And it actually goes through the car. Where's the steering wheel? All right, so there's the car. Now, look at this. Right from the windshield is that window. This is the largest window, right? With a ground floor window. And I just realized I wanted to go a little higher, so I just, I just made a larger line, or a taller line, All right? All these windows have like frames in the middle. Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> I can see on that one. I'm not going to do all the frames in the middle there, but um, yeah. So there's that. Here's the tree. And then sidewalk. Or curb. Follows a few lines for that. And then what do we got here? sidewalk and then it looks like there's some sort of gate thing and then another building i'm just going to be very uh, obtuse how about that word <laughs> about the neighbor's house and then even here we got uh, See, just very quickly, I see I'm matching up my sidewalks and uh, what's this? Curb, right? And then uh, there. Okay, so I think that was like under, I'm not even going to say, I don't know how long that was. <clears throat> um, and then the fun part is to just do throw some color on it super super quickly right because that's it's fun to do that i just have my watercolor palette right there um all lined up ready to go how fun that is. That's the tree. There we go. <clears throat> Woo! Not too much water. How fun is that? All right, the Maverick. <laughs> 1970s. You don't see many old cars in Mexico like you used to, but every now and again, it's kind of cool. I'm going to make that bush a little bit different, even though it's kind of similar. Where's my black? Mmm, that's moon glow. I want it darker. Car underneath of cars are always very dark. That's how it's grounded. So, and then I'm just going to add, there's leaf, big trees in my neighborhood, so I'm just going to add uh, some ambience. I like to make my, just because it's a tree doesn't mean it has to be green, right? All 
right, I have them up here a little bit. There and then a little bit of this green to tie it all in. I use a lot of saturated inks like that because they're super fun. Oh, wait, here, I could just do this. And there we go. <laughs> Still working out the camera angles here. Last thing I'm going to do, just because it's the car. And I like the underneath of my cars to be there. There it is. No time to let that dry. Um, and let's see, I have a... Nah, I was going to use my big fat marker, put some tree branches in there, but I'm not even going to mess with it because that gives you the idea of it. So there we go. I don't think that was 15 minutes, but that's the idea is um, to not spend any more than 15 minutes to do uh, a continuous line drawing uh, that ideally... As you do it more and more with the continuous line, you learn perspective, you learn composition, right? I exaggerated the perspective on this building, but it gives you that sense of, of height, right? And then the windows getting larger as they get closer to the ground also helps. That's something that I learned with continuous line because it just, it taught me how things were connected and how things are, are connected. Does that make sense? <laughs> And that's why I think it's an incredible skill building tool to use the continuous line as a warm up, as a warm up, as a pattern maker, and as a drawing. And these three things together are powerhouses to help you take your drawing next level. So there is the, the rundown of what we're going to be doing in um, the month of April for the continuous line boot camp. And I'm looking forward to seeing thank you to so many of you who have signed up. I'm really excited about this, not only for my own skill, but also to learn how to be a better presenter because I want this to be seamless and I, want, I don't want to waste your time. So thank you for letting me sort of stumble around today. I hope you got the gist of it. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you, those of you who are signed up for the Continuous Line Boot Camp. And there are still a few spaces, which starts Monday, August 3rd. I'm on my way to Panawato for an art retreat where I'll be doing my continuous line urban sketching there with a, a group of retreaters. Um, and then I'll be back on Monday morning, April 3rd, to kick this off. And so, let's see. Let me close it. Um, <laughs> wait, where's my thing? Oh, goodness. Here, it's right here in front of me. So there we go. I want to put my image up here. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in and for um, practicing a continuous line with me. It's super helpful and beneficial to my art um, abilities, and I hope it does the same for you. So I'll see you all next time. Sign up. Send me any questions if you have it. And one other thing, if it's a financial thing, if the, the mo monetary aspect of it is an issue, please email me and we can work it out because I don't want anyone who would want to do this have the money thing be an issue. Look at this. I wanted this to be 45 minutes and it's 44 minutes and 35 seconds. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you everyone for being here and I hope to see you in the boot camp. Bye-bye. <laughs>